Good morning everybody. <laughs> I say good morning but oh my goodness I right got the hump this morning. <laughs> oh just just having one of those days before the day has even properly started. It must be gone 11 by now. I should have been here by 9. I had about three or four little jobs to do, just really little quick things. Oh, and all the cats are hissing at each other. Because uh, Rusty's not neutered, um, he's just really annoying all the girls at the moment. They're very good at standing their ground. They hiss and they swipe at him and get rid of him, but it's just constant hissing battles. Anyway, yeah, so this morning, it's just one of those days. Um, I got up. And it was so dark outside, just so dark. And we've had this day after day after day of just really gray, dark days and just showers whenever. <laughs> Can't predict the showers. Um, oh, I'm itching because of the cats. And, you know, I really do think this weather affects me. I think I'm a bit tired and low anyway, and I was kind of, you know, mentioning that in the last video, and I did go home after that, and I curled up with a book for a while. I had a really early night, but yeah, just still feeling flat as a pancake, so I don't know whether it's that I'm brewing something, or it's this weather that's giving me a massive dose of the blues at the moment. I don't know. I don't mind the cold. I love being down here in the winter on a really crispy morning. Um, I don't even mind, you know, really heavy rain shower and tuck myself up in the shed. But I think this, just this relentlessness of the greyness of the sky and the darkness. So yeah, I was trying to do these four little jobs this morning. Two of them were phone calls. And honestly, you would think that I was speaking gobbledygook to the people I was speaking to. It was like they were they were purposely not understanding me. It drove me insane. And that was after having been on hold for ages. But they were just they were just, it was like brick walls. And I think generally, I think I'm quite a good communicator. I do have an extensive vocabulary to draw on to express myself. But yeah, so even before I'd left the house this morning, I was already wound up by these <laughs> stupid people who refused to understand what I was trying to say. The greyness of the sky. And then I went to the post office to pick up a form. And I've got to say, the staff at my post office are wonderful. They know me by name. They always greet me with smiles and enthusiasm. It's really lovely. Um, but today I got, I don't know, it must have been someone from a different branch who'd been shipped in to cover sickness, I'm not sure. But again, I was asking for this form and she was saying, no, no, that's not how you do it. And I'm thinking, well, I know it's how I do it because I've done it over and over again. Um, and I think she'd misunderstood what I wanted. Maybe I'm just not communicating very well today. I don't know. But she just kept saying, oh, no, you need to you need to do it via the phone or via the Internet, da, da, da. And I was like, well, yeah, I know I can do it via the Internet, but I would have to print the form off the Internet because then I have to put it with other documentation in writing. So why don't I just pick up the form here instead of printing it off the Internet? Save my printer ink. Anyway, <laughs> I left empty-handed. And then... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm just getting it all out of the system, my system. Um, as I mentioned a few days ago, I've been going to one of my... Um, oh, Rusty, leave Poppy alone. <laughs> Poor Poppy. Oh, Poppy, come in here. Good girl, you come and hide with Vivi. That's it. Us girls will stick together. Oh, poor thing. You're right, Poppy. It's all right. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, I've been I've been going to one of my local shops and, and picking up a couple of bags of compost each morning and lugging them down to the allotment because they are at a really good price at the moment. Um, 
but they're quite big to manhandle. And this shop's gone over to self-service checkouts and that's another of my bugbears. Oh, I hate self-service. I want human interaction. Although by the end of this morning, I didn't want human interaction. Anyway, the first thing that happened, of course, I put this bag of compost on the, you know, you kind of scan it and then you burn it. And of course it said, unknown item in bagging area. Of course there's an unknown item. It's a massive sack of compost, you stupid machine. <laughs> so an assistant came over and told the machine to accept it. That's all done. <clears throat> Went to pay. I had my three quid in cash. Card only. <sighs> Okay, so I put my card in and and then I'm, I'm sort of trying to manhandle them off the counter and into my granny trolley. But the granny trolley's got like a drawstring around the top and it sort of folds in on itself. So I was kind of oh, was just ridiculously struggling with it. And the next thing, a lady with a charity box came and shook it right under my nose. Would you like to make a donation? Did it? And started doing this spiel to me about this charity. And I was thinking... For goodness sakes, have a bit of common sense. I am struggling with a massive bag of compost, a granny trolley that doesn't want to open its aperture to allow the compost ingress. Which hand shall I use to go into my bag to get some money out to put into your box? <sighs> oh, I'm so grumpy. And the thing is, anyway, obviously I've got here now. And the idea for today, I'm so sorry everybody, but there we go. <laughs> the idea for today is to do a load of sewing. But I think all things related to the garden, whether it's sewing, weeding, watering, pricking out, it's just like with cooking and baking. I don't think you should ever do it in a bad mood. I don't know, call me an old hippie, but I just feel that the plants, the seeds, this life around me. I don't want it to pick up my bad vibrations, if you see what I mean. So, the first thing I'm going to do before I even think about seed sowing is I'm just going to sit outside the shed and have some cat cuddles. Poppy's just tucked in behind me here, so I'll have a cuddle with her. And I'm sure that little act of stroking the cats will calm me actually i feel calmer already having whooped <laughs> it all onto you sorry here you go here's all my problems take them <sighs> yeah so okay so what am i going to do today i'm going to sow brassicas i'm going to sow flowers i'm going to plant out some of the sweet peas the ones that are in the toilet rolls because the roots are coming out under the bottom I'm going to, oh, mustn't forget, I want to do something with the kale. And I will ask advice of those of you who've grown it before me. Um, that's the main jobs, is the sewing. And then another job to do is I really need to sort the shed out because, you know, here's a lesson learned as well. When I arrived, what, 20 minutes, half an hour ago or so, I was in such a bad mood, <laughs> honestly. I could have, I could have ripped someone's head off. Not that I'm wont to violence, but you know, um, yeah. So arriving in such a grumpy mood, and I open the shed, and it's just—it's an absolute mess in here. There's just stuff. Oh, poppykins! There's stuff absolutely everywhere. Um, there's hardly room to swing a cat, not that I would swing the cats, but the reason I do want to get it sorted is because to arrive on a day when you're not feeling great and to open the door to mess, it just makes your heart feel a bit more heavy. And also, uh, because we do keep having these rain showers and I look at the forecast and it says rain at four and then before you know it, half eleven, it's raining. So I need to get it sorted in here so that... If it absolutely wellies down, I can just bring my seed sowing in here and carry on. Note to self, what do you think, Poppy? Should we have a nice bit of a spring clean in the shed today, hey? Mm. Bless her. Okay, so I'm going to have a little bit of a cuddle and then let's sow some brassicas. <laughs> the crows. 
But I'm definitely feeling a bit more chipper for my cuddles with the cats and for um, chatting with one of my plot neighbours. <sighs> so I'm cracking. I'm just starting off, first of all, with the flowers. Just in case there's any residual mm, feelings, I don't want to put those in with my veggies. So for the flowers, I'm just using this, hang on, how many is it? Five by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eight, eight, 50 cells. A 50 cell tray. And within each cell, I'm just gonna sew, oh, just a little sprinkling, four or five of each. And then what I tend to do with all the flowers, whatever they've been in the past, Cosmos in particular, once they sort of get established in these, generally I'll pop them out and just plant the whole thing. I, I tend not to thin them or prick them out. Uh, we'll see, we'll see how, in, if they get really crowded, if there's loads in there, then I will prick them out and thin them out. So this year I am growing Cosmos as usual. So I've already got a couple of rows in there. And then I'm gonna do a couple of rows of this one called Seashell which is from my friend Jackie in Canada and these are a really lovely they've got a sort of a, a whiffly how to describe it it's sort of like a little whiffle to the edge of the petal almost like a sort of a, a fluting on the edge they're very fluffy and gorgeous oh she sent me loads it's brilliant so in the past I haven't bothered differentiating between seed starting compost, compost, multi-purpose, whatever. I just use whatever I can lay my hands on. I do like the veg grow compost, but it is expensive. And this year I can't afford it. Um, but the shop that I've been using, they're doing a multi-purpose and they're doing a seed sowing compost. So actually, for the first time in ages, I've gone for a seed, a specifically seed starting compost. So like I said, I'm just going to try about... Oh my, that was a bit heavy-handed. Oops. I'll show you closer up in a minute when I do the next row. Oh, sort of four or five per cell. <laughs> that one's got about ten. That one will probably have to be thinned. So I'll get, I'll literally get all the seeds in first, give them all a bit of a firm down, and they're very, very light dusting of... Hello Poppy compost to cover them. I'm also going to be trying this year. This is the first time for me. I don't know what to expect. I've got some white salvia called Palomino. It's not lovely. Palomino is my favourite colouring in a horse. Yay! And that's from Nancy in the States. I've also got some leftover echinacea. I think it was, was it last year or the year before? I tried some because I want to have it in the herb bed, but they, they, they came up. I pricked them out, and then they stayed at about this stage for about five or six months, and then just keeled over one day. So I'm trying my echinacea again, and then I've also been sent. Where are you going, puppy poop? I've also been sent some aquilegia called lime sorbet. That's beautiful actually, isn't it? I love white flowers which are verging on lime. It's gorgeous. And some, oh, some Heliopsis. Really beautiful as well. The point with all the flowers is a lot of them I sow in memory of some of the kids I've looked after. And they're the ones that tend to self-seed and come every year. With things like this, look, if they don't come, it's not the end of the world, is it? It's not my food, so I'm not too worried about it, but it's nice to have a go. Also, let me just show you this. Can you see? Oh, <laughs> one's just popped out. Um, my neighbour, Catherine, who I've shown you on her plot a couple of times. These are coffee stirrers from her office. So she started leaving a, a little bucket in the kitchen next to coffee making with an arrow saying, please recycle your coffee stirrers. Now they're quite skinny, I'm like, say, where's a lollipop stick? That's a normal lollipop stick. But they still make great little markers. And she was saying, it's, it's funny because while she was away, 
she thought they'd all be thrown away. But one of the other women in her office is also a gardener, so she started collecting too. So all these coffee stirrers are now getting recycled. Brilliant. But also they'd be great for craft projects for kids and stuff, wouldn't they? So if you have that sort of thing in your office, maybe put a bucket next to them and encourage people to save, not chuck. Right, let me give you a little close up on these lovely, teeny tiny little salvias. Wow, they really are the teeniest, tiniest. I don't know if you can even see them in their teeniest, tiniest little seeds. Don't want to miss any of them. So, oh yes, look at that tiny. So literally all I'm gonna do is just a little sprinkle in each cell. Teeny little sprinkle you can see with the cosmos. Oops, a little bit heavy handed. Never mind. Well, I think that's going to be all of them in there. And then like I say, later on, I'll just give them the lightest, lightest dusting of um, compost to cover them. Oops, are you trembling and wobbling as I move that? And then the echinacea now. What was the used by? Ah, so it does say used by August 2019. So these might as well go in nothing to lose and put it this way they are not going to grow in the packet are they they're quite big seeds you can see they're quite handleable so I think maybe one two maybe three per cell actually let's see how far they go and then I might just oh not very neat I think I'm gonna do four or five per cell because I don't know that these will keep another year. Maybe they will. There we go, I've got five left over. <laughs> Fingers crossed for them. Okay, what's next? Well, I won't bore you with what's next. I'll just get on, get the rest in, get a little bit of compost on them, get them in the cold frame and give them a little sprinkle of water. Well, despite it being such a grey overcast day, the garden is working its magic on me. I've been here about an hour or so now and I feel like a completely different person to the one who turned up all grumpy. Just goes to show, doesn't it? So if you're getting up today and you're feeling foul and you've got the opportunity, go to your garden. I've just put the flower seeds in the cold frame and given them a sprinkle of water and while I was there, the rosemary bush is absolutely buzzing with bees. It's so beautiful. Anyway, time to crack on. Actually, <clears throat> I say that there's quite a lot to do today in terms of sowing. And seed sowing is one of those things, it, it does take a while. You know, you've got to fill all your little trays up and get everything in and write your labels. It is a fairly time consuming job. And I would say it's definitely not a job to rush. I'm kind of thinking to myself today, I'm gonna to give myself the whole day to do it. It won't take the whole day, but if I have that mindset of let it be the whole day, then I can go about it in a much more calm, chilled manner. Oh, you can tell, can't you now? So, it always feels really weird to me, somewhat counterintuitive. At this stage in early April, I'm sowing for next winter, and I'm sowing for next winter before I've even sown half of the stuff for this summer. But brassicas take a while. Um, now, the other thing is because I don't, this is for anyone who isn't familiar with my garden in particular, um, I don't have a bed. I don't have enough space to have a dedicated brassica bed at this time of year. So what I do is I'm going to sow them in the cells now. I prick them out and I put them into individual pots and they stay in those pots all summer. So normally you'd be thinking about getting these out into the ground in June or July even. I don't have the space. So they stay in the pots all summer. I give them some shade netting and keep them as cool as I can during the summer allowing them to grow but not hopefully bolting um, and then as my summer crops come out 
usually the first things are the onions so as they come out the brassicas can start going in so quite often if you look at lots of other channels as well it looks like my brassicas are quite small and behind where everyone else is at in about sort of october or so when i'm planting but it's okay i play the long game with mine i'm not expecting to harvest in october november I leave them be and it's sort of December, January, February that I really start to tuck in and enjoy them. So, obviously if I had the space and I had room to have a dedicated brassica bed, I'd get them in much earlier and I'd start harvesting them earlier. So this year I'm going to grow, <laughs> I'm gonna try again. Oh, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. So the brussels I did over this winter, which weren't fabulous, but they're a bit better than I've had before. That's my third go. So this year it's gonna be my fourth go. I'm going with my Groninger again, because I have spare seed. And I was also sent some red ball. I love West Coast seeds, they're brilliant. So I've got some red ball, some of those. And then I'm going to do some Virtus, that's the Savoy cabbage I do. Again, because I've got leftover seeds from last year and some regular kale. Good old purple sprouting broccoli. Again, leftover seed from last year. It's been a cheap seed year for me this year. Not only with all the seed I had left over from last year, the seed I saved myself, but also all of you beautiful people sending me seed. Then, the star of my brassicas, my absolute favorite it's the star in the garden, it's the star in the kitchen. I can't imagine my kitchen or my garden without Cavallo Nero. Or as it says on here, Nero di Toscano. Nero di Toscano. Cavallo Nero. It just seems to grow really well in my garden. I don't know why. I don't do anything special with it. I think it just likes my clay. And then lastly, I'm going to do some Calabrese. Um, I bought this one new this year, and I've inadvertently bought an F1. I don't normally do that, but there we go. And then I've also been sent, I don't know what it's named, but this is one from Premier Seeds. So, right, let's get cracking. So these trays I'm using, again, I start them all in cells. There's 15 cells in total. I put four seeds in each cell. So for each variety, in theory, or actually not each variety, because something like the Brussels, I'll do both of them in one tray. In theory, I should get 60 plants, which is more than I need. I generally like to have between 20 and 30 of each of my brassicas. So I over sow just in case. And let's face it, you get loads and loads of seeds normally in brassica, um, in brassica packets. Just while I'm talking about that, which is my label, let me find the label. Oh, don't forget the labels. It's so funny, I was watching Paul's video about sowing carrots the other day and he's saying, don't forget to, sow, don't forget to um, put your labels in. <laughs> totally forgot to put my labels in. And I've got four, five different varieties of carrots in. I just have to watch the video back and see what I did where. Yeah, just on the subject of seed amounts, um, that packet of Sarah Raven seeds, the Heliops, is it Heliops? Something like that. It's from the Greek for sun, Heli. Um, 10 seeds, 10 seeds. Her packet's are like 299, 399, really expensive. And when I did my Autumn King the other day, it only did one row. There seemed to be so few seeds in the packets this year. I don't know whether that's a reflection of the drought last year, but I mean, come on guys, companies, you've been a bit, stingy so all brassica seeds look very very similar you see that look at the filth of my hands they're all like little um little pellety balls which makes them pretty easy to handle so like i said i'm going to put four in each cell i say four sometimes i'm a bit cat handed and i might end up with five in a cell doesn't matter. The idea being hopefully that from each cell I will get at least two good strong plants and therefore have my 
20 to 30 of each variety to keep my belly happy during the winter of 2019, 2020. Where does time go? Okay, this is gonna take me forever. So I won't bore you with them all. They're all gonna be sewn in exactly the same way. A bit of a covering of compost afterwards, obviously a little bit more than I gave to the flowers. I'll go in the cold frame, I'll give them a watering, and that'll be another tick job done off the list. And then there's a couple of things I want to do in the garden with you guys later and there's a question I want to ask those of you who have grown the perennial kales before you need to help me with something please and I have to say this is a deeply pleasing sight <laughs> it feels so good for every single little seed that's sown Oh, grow well, my beautiful brassicas, grow well. Okay, perennial kale growing experts. This is my question for you. I'm just gonna remove that little frame I made to put the EnviroMesh over. Um, I'm gonna give it a steak today. When I first put it in, I did really little one down here when the plant was yay big but as it's growing actually let me cut that off and you'll see hang on it's kind of it is quite floppy and top heavy at the moment so my my instinct is to stake it my question for you all is is that right is that the right thing to do to give it some support. Um, I'll do it fairly loosely, but yeah, I just, I just think it's gonna get bigger and bigger and more and more top heavy. So I, I just had visions of it ending up either growing on the ground or at worst, snapping completely. So, whoop. Oh, what am I doing? So please let me know if I'm if I'm doing the right thing. I hope so. But you'll you'll see this video in a couple of days, just a couple of days anyway. So if it's the wrong thing to do, I can quickly take it out. Oh, but yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't grown one before, I haven't got a clue, I'm just sort of going by a bit of instinct and of course, you know, we, we do sometimes stake our cabbages and what have you, so why wouldn't I do it for my kale? Oh, and while we're there we'll have a weed. Good. Good, good, good. Someone's been keeping an eye on me as I work. <laughs> You're right there, Rusty. You finally stopped chasing the girls, have you? What me, he says, what me? Gorgeous, handsome chap. You carry on snoozing, buddy. Isn't it wonderful when the garden fixes us? Oh my goodness, I can't believe the difference it's made to how I feel. It's just wonderful. I've still got a few things I want to carry on with this afternoon but I'm going to put those into a separate video because otherwise <laughs> this will be an hour long video of seed sowing and stuff. So for now I'm going to call it quits with you in this video um, and then you'll see me in the next one. <laughs> same clothes, same dirty hands, getting on with something else. But in the next video I'm going to be sowing something so, so special and meaningful for me and I think when I sew it I'm going to explain why it's so meaningful and it's going to take me back in history a little while and take me back to my old theatre days so I'm really looking forward to getting on with that this afternoon and that will come to you in the next video so tune in for that but for now
it's cheerio cheerio from me and all the cats with all their hissing and do you know what the only slightly grumpy thing that's my residue of grump from this morning rusty's obviously been in my shed and sprayed oh it stinks i'm gonna ban that boy while he's so um horny bless him digressing it's been a really lovely session i'm so glad you were able to join me for it and and I hope, <laughs> I hope I didn't make you grumpy at the beginning. And if I did, I hope being out here with me had the same effect on you as it did on me, which was just so calming and peaceful and wonderful. So for now, it's cheerio from me. I will see you all again really soon with my next lot of seeds. But until then, whatever you're up to, whoever you're up to it with, just have fun, have joy, be optimistic, celebrate these beautiful, beautiful moments we can grab in our gardens. In the meantime, I can hear dogs out the back now. Oh, Topsy-turvy, funny little world of animals. I'm going. I will see you all again soon. But in the meantime, take care of yourselves.